Hi, this is Dustin with Pro AV School. I just wanted to show you a little bit of an issue that I was dealing with that I had to work around getting uh, Polycom sound structure and Crestron to work nicely just in the context of switching between line sources. So you see here, this is kind of an example. I've got four cable TV inputs. I've got uh, three different rooms. Um, these kind of change names on even it doesn't matter. Say they're uh, from 1901. Uh, naming and sound structure is important when you're talking with Crestron because that's how you define the channels on the other side. But anyways, I've got these channels and you can see that, uh, say I want room 1902, I only want cable TV 1 or cable TV 2 or 3 or 4. I Basically I need make break before make switching, so I need to clear it out and then switch the new one. Well, it doesn't exactly work that well if you're doing it uh, using po uh, the Polycom modules in Crestron. So here's the workaround that I did. Um, first of all, I went in here, I created a partial preset. I'll just show you how I did that. Um, just give it a name. Basically a partial preset to clear a room. First, what I want to do with room 1902, I'm going to hold that there hold down shift click to select them all hit enter to bring this up at a cross point I'm going to unmute them all so that from the record preset state I've got them all there and I want to clear them up so I go to my preset um, I actually want to clear these all out I could just write them over but I'll just clear them out um, so I want record preset, select from top, do record, go to my matrix, sure why not. Select these all, hit enter, hit that, they're all cleared. Hit stop, save the name. Now if I go, like this isn't live connected to a sound structure, if it was you'd see that that was green and stuff. This is just kind of a demo. So if I go to my presets and I run this preset now, you go here and it's cleared out the switching. Let's show you again. Sorry, so that's good. That's on the uh, on the sound structure side. And you remember I called it clear-1902 um, case sensitive as well here. So now on the Crestron side, I've done a couple of things. Now this is just kind of skeleton code snipped out of a project that I've been working on, but this is how I how I did it. So I used the regular feedback processor module. There's a signal you have to feed right to the preset module. The preset module, you can trigger up to 10 presets. If you need to do more than 10, you can have multiple instances of the run preset module. Route to sound structure and from the preset module. And then here is where you put the name. And the name I set is clear-1902, so that's perfect. So okay, so how are we going to trigger that? Well, in this system, I'm tracking my source changes with an analog initialized. These are coming from, say, button presses, and that's changing my room 1902 source. Well, that is actually going into a serial analog one shot. Whenever that changes, one tick, it pulses this room 1902 sound structure clear, and this signal is actually my run preset. So first thing it does is it clears out the old routing. So again, this is break before make switching. So you're not having two cable TVs at the same time. You're clearing it out first, and then you're going to very quickly switch it to your new source. So the other thing I did here is I ran all of my, I'm just trying to find it here. I ran all of my, my signals. I might actually have missed pulling that out. I had, I think I had them run into Oh, sorry, it was into this buffer. I think these are actually supposed to be interlocked. I think that's what I'm missing here. Anyways, let's assume that these are these are interlocked so that it will hold the status of these. I'll just actually do that right now. Could do these off the press, or I could do it off an equate. It doesn't really matter. 
for the context of just this. I'm just doing this. So the thing about this, I still don't quite have it right here because you want to clear that after the switch is made, but for right now it's good enough. Um, when you change source, it'll hold this high, but it's not really doing anything with it until it gets to this part here. So remember the, uh, the one shot, source changed, it clears the old routing, it also triggers this delay after half a second, and you can probably even speed that up a bit. I just put it at half a second to be generous. And then I fire this push new source. The only thing that push new source does is it opens the gate essentially on this buffer, and pushes whatever on this side out to this side. And since it's interlocked, only one of these will be active. Um, and then these are connected to a serial I.O., which is actually driven right to the sound structure itself. Now, you could have done this with uh, with a cross point control. I didn't really want to mess with that. I thought it was easier based on the number of rooms I was dealing with to just do it like this. And that way I could copy and paste quite easily. But anyways, so now you're selecting your new source depending on what it is. You're setting open or unmute the cross point between cable TV1 and room 1902. Now I'd have to change this here because in my sound structure file I didn't put spaces. So again I said it's very very context sensitive so my channels here they would line up now. So this part here is just basically dealing with room 1902 so if you wanted to, uh, to add your other rooms you could do a copy and a paste and use name everything. And for some reason it's not working. I think it's because space it out the same. So I'd have to make sure you you have to make sure when you do search and replace that you have a proper naming structure and otherwise you start having problems like this. And this is basically just an example of how, how it could be done. There's obviously other ways to do it. It's, uh, it's just something that I was thinking about as I was using a sound structure to switch between sources because you can't jam two line sources together at the same time. You'll hear it and it won't be good. So I'm Dustin with ProAVSchool.com. Be sure to check out the site for uh, ongoing tips and tricks that I run across as I do my daily work in the ProAV industry. Thanks.